So your tuning stays in tune. This is really a hundred dollar bass. I mean, okay. So I make bases for a lot of different companies and I do a lot of different things. And I work I work one company I work with is uh, the Ken Smith design, KSD. So this is a KSD base that we make. Um, that we made for them. Um, now I did my machine head modification to this. Now this one, the machine heads on this base are, as you can see, no string retainer to begin with, okay? This is an awesome bass. <laughs> I don't want to clip, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. So, watch. Grab the machine head. We go in this position. Yeah, if I do this, grab my whole hand, pull on it, I can do it. If I pull like that, it doesn't do it. But if I grab it and pull this way, yeah. But, yeah, that's not going to happen, so. So this strengthens it, but the, now... As soon as I put them on, the neck got to loosen the truss rod because you know the string tension isn't isn't so much anymore on the neck. But it's a the most amazing thing to me is that how much punch the string has. It doesn't flop. The other bases I have, when they're tuned to 440, they just seem to flop. You know, this is like totally controlling, making it tighter. And if if in if you have a dead spot and you want to get rid of it, you can actually change, instead of changing the tuning, you can actually readjust the location on the post. Now I recommend making the string as low as possible on the post, winding it all the way down. But on my machine head design, you can put it in the middle, at the top, anywhere you want. Um, basically, and then the other issue is they're not, the strings are not wrapping on top of each other anymore. Um, so they're not laying on each other. So, although, like I said, it's not locking, it locks into where you want it to go. So, and on top of that, so you can stretch the string and it doesn't, unless they're new strings, it basically, it, there's an A. Oh, you can't see it. It's a little out, but that's a lot of stretching. But here, that, here I, that comes right in. Here the machine head, how nice the function is. So, my whole idea was just basically to correct these problems, but I don't want to rip everybody off, you know, and cost a lot of money. So, you know, I made it affordable. So, what I did was I made an exact replacement machine head set for every base. So, you can just replace the machine heads. Now you can go buy Goto and other machine heads. You know, a lot of base, you go look, there's not a lot of chance out there. Hip shots are great, a lot of them don't retrofit on. Um, so if you already own a base, what do you do? Buy a new neck, buy a new base. What I'm given here is the option to have a better tone on your current base without spending a fortune. So the design, you know, I'll be selling these basically direct, they're already in production. Um, It'll be, you know, between, depending on the color and the hardware and the actual model, if it's die cast or open, um, they'll be direct from $50 to $75, $80, um, which isn't much of an investment for what you get. You know, you, you don't, your truss rod comes back, your dead spots are better, your, the tone is just... Like I said, it doesn't 100% get rid of dead spots, but they, they sure are a lot better. I mean, it's, like I said, if you want to get rid of dead spots, 100%, and change your tune. <laughs> drop down, you know. Like, if I, if I drop this note down, like right now, it's a, it, uh, it's a G, well, almost G. So I'll drop it down to 
F sharp, okay? Watch these notes. I'll drop it down to F sharp. I'm at F sharp now, watch. This is crazy. Unbelievable. So the notes I had before that were dead are now alive. It's a frequency in the, in the resonance of the wood. So, we'll go back to where we were. Beautiful tuning. And, um... Again, I'm a guitar player, so I don't play bass much. But all us guitar players do play bass. We just don't play bass. As well as bass players play bass. So get your bass back. I mean, I don't, you know, these are direct fit. I mean, the holes in the back here, or they're, they're, they fit exactly on what you already have. You don't have to change anything, you don't have to draw any holes, you don't have to think about anything. All you do is take the ones you have off, put these on. If you don't like them, send them back. If you don't think it makes that big of a difference, then, then I didn't do my job, and then you could send them back. But I don't think anybody is going to see that problem. You know, I'll, I'll give you your money back. But it's that big of a deal. All right, that's enough of my, my super bad bass licks. <laughs> okay, so those of you out there who don't know who I am, uh, just real quick at the end of the video here. Um, yeah, I've been in the business for, oh my God, since I was 18. And I'm a lot older than that now. Um, I have a few books out. Um, one book I have out is uh, not well written, but I did it in 2000. It's a uh, guitarist design production and repair. And then this book, it goes through everything. There's a younger version of me. Don't look much different. Um, you know, it's a book about everything about, you know, setting up guitars, designing guitars, how to build them, electronics. Whole sections in here on parts, too. So I'm not trying to sell the book. I'm just trying to explain where I'm from. And then this is another book some of you might know. I worked at a company called Ibanez Guitars for a long time. Um, that was a more than 10 years ago. But before I left, I wrote a book, um, which is probably the same picture as in that book. <laughs> um, this is called Ibanez, The Untold Story. Um, and this is, I researched uh, Japan. You know, when I was there, we did the gem and we did the Satriani models and Paul Gilbert, and Barry Willis, and just about everybody. Um, the PBC guitars, I did them. J Customs, USA Customs, I ran the custom shop. Then I left there in 2000 and opened my own company, um, and now I have a few factories in the world, including one right here. Um, and my latest that I came out in April is a, an iPad book, um, which you can get on iTunes, <laughs> so you can see more about me. Um, basically, it's a book on, it's just on maintaining your guitar, and uh, it's interactive, so you know, you can, you can click on anything you want, and it'll bring up you know, the section, you can zoom in, zoom out. So if you want to know how to adjust your truss rod, if I can get a little closer here, you uh, just hit the truss rod, and it brings up all the information on truss rods, and you can scroll through it, and you can do it in this mode, which is a regular, like a real book. And if you want to zoom in on something, you can zoom in, look at it. And if there's links in there, it takes you all around. There's just the picture, close that out. So this goes in adjusting the truss rod, different styles of truss rods, how they're installed. You know, these it shows you the, uh, you know, bowed neck, warp neck, how to prevent buzz. All these things I worked on to get rid of this, uh, this problem with these headstocks. And um, so if you want, you go on iTunes and you can, uh, 
Here's some truss rod wrenches. Uh, all the different styles of truss rod wrenches. How they work. So for $7.99 you can go on iTunes and get this book if you have an iPad. It only works on the iPad right now. Um, but you can see you know, what I've been doing my whole life and that really all I all I've been doing is trying to make instruments better. Um, I don't think you can ever make a perfect instrument, 100% perfect, but I do believe you can improve anything. And um, as long as you can improve it, we're going to keep improving it. But you can't change... The one thing you cannot change is you cannot change the basic concept of the instrument. You know, you can, like I said, you can make it out of graphite or you can do this or do that, but your traditional player it, you likes wood. So what we're doing here is we're improving the wood, um, the tension on the wood, not improving the wood itself, we're improving the feet, the tension on the neck, we're controlling the strength of the headstock, and we're eliminating any flex. So if you want to try them, uh, they'll be available hopefully by Christmas. Um, they'd be a nice stocking stuffer. So uh, that's it for me. And uh, that's my first uh, YouTube video. 34 minutes and 8 seconds. A little long. I'll make a shorter one if you get bored by this time. Okay? And uh, you can find them on... Uh, go to noahjames.com uh, and there'll be a link there that'll take you to where you need to go to get them. Uh, at this point, they're not there yet because, you know, we, we just filed for the patent. Patent's going through, so I can officially release them to the public. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it, and you guys all have a good night. Thank you.